guys, it's Ashton with Oakland Roots, and this weekend we had quite a bit of snow that was absolutely beautiful, but it makes us ready to see a little bit of green and start thinking about planting our garden and what seeds we want to start and what plants we might want, um, where everything's going to go in the garden and that sort of thing. So with that, we have made several seed orders lately. Last year, Mom and I decided that we would do not near as many seeds this year because it was way too much transplanting and all the work we put in last year. But of course we ended up buying even more seeds this year because we can't resist. A lot of those will actually be going in a pumpkin patch and a cut flower garden, which we are trying out this year. But you might also see some of those in the greenhouse. We received our first order of seeds today in the mail and it is from Johnny Seeds. This is one of my favorite companies to buy our seeds from. So. Come along with me while we unbox the seeds. There are several seeds that they said were on back order and would not make it until February. And th again, this is only one of the different companies that we ordered from, so we will be doing more videos with those. Look at all those seeds. So what I will do, I will sort these out real quick and then I will go through these one by one and we'll put a picture up on the screen on what they would look like because Johnny Seed Packets do not have any pictures. And then I will tell you a little bit about them and why we chose these for this year. Okay, so now I've got these kind of sorted out. So the first thing I'll go through is all of our pumpkin seeds. We got a bunch of pumpkins and squash this year. We did a little pumpkin patch last year, but we're going to try to incorporate pumpkins around the base of our ornamental corn in a second patch this year. So hopefully we'll have two and we'll have lots of options for sale in the fall at the greenhouse. The first one I have is the Weeby Little Pumpkin. It is, I'll have to look here at my iPad for some of these to remember what all we got. It is just a little miniature pumpkin, but it's also more round than your typical flat pumpkin. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> so again, we'll put a picture of each of these on the seed so this or on the screen so this should go quick, pretty quick. This one is a Tom Fox pumpkin. It is a pretty standard size kind of a carving type pumpkin. We got gumdrop which again, it's a little bigger, probably a medium size, and it's a little narrower on top and larger on the bottom, and that makes just kind of a unique shape to add into your decorations. We have hybrid giant pumpkins with polar bear color, so this is going to be a huge white pumpkin. I love to incorporate all different colors into our decorations and just be able to see that out there in the patch, so this will be a really fun one. Speckled Hound Pumpkin. So this one is orange and it kind of has gray, like you've poured paint over the top and it's poured down over the side. So I'm really excited to see what this one turns out to be. This one is Sunlight PMR F1. This is a really bright yellow pumpkin, which you don't see very many of those. Winter Luxury, which has kind of a soft, almost pink peach color to it and it almost looks metallic in the picture it's really pretty we have small autumn wings blend gourds these a lot of times we will put on an arch made out of a cattle panel and those are so much fun they grow like crazy you can plant them a little closer together if you allow them to go up instead of out and it helps save room in the garden and we like to make a little tunnel so that you can walk through and pick them from underneath Acorn Winter Squash Carnival. So this one is kind of a speckled green color. So the bottom is speckled green, the top is orange, and then there's kind of pale green speckles in between, which I'll show you a picture. And we love to eat acorn squash too. It's really good. Um, again, they're really easy to grow and they seem to just take over and grow like crazy. And that's another thing that we've grown on fences quite a bit. The next one is Knucklehead. So this one is a pretty large pumpkin and it has um, the little orange warts all over it. Champion F1 is again, it's a carving type size pumpkin. 
We struggled to grow pumpkins to full size, so we got a lot of large ones. And if they make large pumpkins, then great. If not, we at least have smaller pumpkins to look at. This one is Mellow Yellow, which is a um, bright yellow again, but this is a bigger yellow pumpkin. We have Goblin Eggs mix, and this is a small squash. It is round and it's bright yellow, and instead of like splatters of green, it'll have um, like spots of green, sort of. Again, we'll put a picture up. The next one is Daisy Gourd, which we actually grew these year, this year and saved some of the seeds. So we will have those as well. But just in case that doesn't work out, we got some more because these are one of our favorites. The next one is Blaze. So this is, this one is the cracks within the pumpkin are really dark orange and then the outside is more of a pale yellow. So it's got almost stripes to it, but it's a little bigger than your typical mini pumpkin that's striped. I am not even going to attempt to say this one, but I will put the name and the picture up on the screen and this is what it is called. This is a really deep orangish red color and it's kind of a flatter pumpkin, but it's really big. So again, this will add a little bit different color than what you typically see. We have Casparita, which is another white pumpkin. It is a really miniature small pumpkin, so it'll be about the size of your hand. We have bottle and birdhouse gourds. So I love these. My grandpa used to always hang the birdhouse gourds out to dry and then he'd carve out the birdhouse hole and then put hang those up in his tree and I absolutely love that. And I also like to paint, so that's a fun project is to be able to paint those gourds. Once we have some dried out, we may make a video of us painting some different designs. And then the last one we have is Harrowsmith Select. This is just a mix of all kinds of small gourds. There are some that are striped, there's some that are orange and different colors. And again, these, I really like the little pumpkins and the small gourds because they're easy to grow because you can do the arches and they don't take up near as much room. But also they're really easy to decorate with. You can put them inside, you can throw them in a bowl, you can put them in a basket outside. And they really add to your decorations when next to like the mums and the pumpkins and that sort of thing. We have a few more pumpkins I believe on the way but those were some of the ones that were on backward. The next thing we have which is along the lines of the fall theme are some ornamental corn. One of the corns we got is glass gem. So this is all different colored kernels and um, we had a lot of fun the first year we planted ornamental corn. It did so good because the raccoons got into our um, sweet corn, but they did not touch this. And the stalks were so strong and so pretty, and it, they ha kind of had a maroon color. And we have not grown this variety, but we love to take these. And actually, when you get these for decorations, um, you can pop those kernels right off the corn um, cob and plant those straight into your garden the next year. We also got broom corn, which we would like to incorporate this along with corn stalks in the fall for different decorations with a little bit different texture. This red broom corn will have um, more of a red top on it. And then we also got colored uprights broom corn. And this is kind of a mixture of different colors. We also got some ornamental grasses that this is a combination for our cut flower garden and also for the fall plants and decorations. Um, the first one we have is black tip wheat. We thought this would be really fun mixed in into fall arrangements, but also making um, fall wreaths and that sort of thing. And again, if we do any of these projects, we will make a video to let you know kind of take you step by step the process and a lot of these will also be available in our greenhouse store. We have a silver tip wheat as well which is very similar to the other one it's just not got as dark of a tip and then we have purple majesty which this one is beautiful when you plant this it's sort of a millet type look and it is so pretty in a fall arrangement with the bright colored mums underneath, it will just really stand out. It grows really tall, so it'll really make your planter pop. And then we got just a regular pearl millet. And 
I did not realize when I bought it how big of a, a bag this came in, but this will work out really good because we could also plant some in Zach's food plot for the deer, so he would really appreciate that, make it kind of a dual purpose. We like to share uh, turnip seeds we do that with, and then he also wants to plant a sunflower patch, which I had no argument there. <laughs> The next thing I'll talk about is um, vegetables for our garden. We got crimson sweet watermelon, which this is one we plant every year. And we have pretty good luck with. Last year we had something go through. Within two days we went out there and we had melons one day. And two days later the whole patch was just wiped out. So this year we're going to keep a little closer eye on it and make sure there aren't any pests or that sort of thing. One thing with watermelon that you want to do, you want to rotate where that is every three years. So if you plant on the north side of your garden, the next year move it down a little bit and then the next year a little more. That way you're not always planting in the same place and that helps with disease resistance. The next watermelon we have is Sugar Baby. So these are pretty small and we're going to try out this year planting them on an archway. They might still be too heavy and pull the vine down, but we're going to give it a shot because anytime we can go up instead of out, it's saving room in the garden and it makes picking so much easier. Rather than having to bend over, you're, it's right there at eye level and you can see it a lot easier than you can when it's on the ground. The next one we got is yellow zucchini squash. So our family absolutely loves zucchini. We grow it like crazy every year and we cannot get enough. But last year we tried yellow squash and we were not a fan. We did not like it. That's just personal preference. But this year we thought it'd be fun to try yellow zucchini and see if it's more like the yellow squash or more like the zucchini we love. The last one is Mexican sour gherkin cucumbers. So these are also known as cucumelons. And they are so much fun. These vines weren't crazy. We, they were little bitty, real dainty vines with little leaves on them. And at first when we planted them, we really weren't sure they would even survive. And by the time they took off, I think we had two plants at the base of every archway. And it was just a mass over the arches. Like you, it almost shaded underneath. And the cucumbers only get about this big and they were really easy to eat because you didn't have to slice them you could just pop them in a lunch and you were good to go and they were also really fun to pickle we pickled some of these and we've tried them out so far so good on those next i will go through uh, some of the flowers we got for our cut flower garden again this these you may see them in the greenhouse you might not it just depends on what time we have and um if you do want to see these, be sure and drop us a comment and we may be able to get a few planted if there's enough demand for it. The first thing I have is Sahara Rudbeckia. These are so pretty and they are a perennial. I believe. Nope, they are not in our zone. Some forms of Rudbeckia are, but this one is actually a tender perennial in zone 9 through 10. And another thing I like about Johnny Seeds, there's so much information on the pack. I mean, this tells you exactly how to start all of your seeds, how to grow it, when to deadhead, when to pinch it back, how to grow it for a cut flower if you're harvesting it. There's just so much information. And I would recommend if you buy your seeds somewhere else and the packet doesn't give you very much information, go on the Johnny Seeds website and find something similar and you can get all the information from there as well. Another one we're growing uh, more for ornamental than consumption is dark opal purple basil. These leaves are really pretty and the flowers really are too. So this would add a really nice interest in an arrangement. The next one is Sunball Crasp Craspedia. And this one is just, it's kind of silvery leaves and then it has a long stalk with a yellow ball on top. And it's really interesting. I've never really seen a flower like it. Oh, Callie wants to say hello. This is our little border collie. She's six months old. One of them. If you've, hear, if you've heard growling in the video, it's because her and her brother are fighting and wrestling around the house, having a good time. Tucker loves it when his sister comes over to play. This one, um, again, I've never really seen anything like this, so and I've never grown it either, so we're anxious to try this out. The next one I have is... 
Chobod Piketty Double Mix Dianthus. I, again, I have no idea if I'm saying that right. But these are really pretty. They're like a double bloom. And they're bicolor, but it's not your typical, like, the center's one color and the petals are another. This is like almost splatters of white. And they're in all different colors. We grew some of these last year. And we didn't end up seeing or noticing many of them, but the ones that came up were so pretty. Next, we have Elegance Purple Lavender. So I love lavender and we have never grown it, but I am determined to each year add one or two different varieties of lavender and have a clump of each because it's so pretty to dry. It keeps its color and it stays pretty for a long, long time. And it's, all, it's pretty in arrangements, it smells good, it's beautiful as a plant and it never really doesn't look good throughout the year. Um, in fact, I have, two years ago for Christmas, my aunt actually got me this bouquet of lavender and you can see it is so pretty still in that vase. Looking forward to lots of projects with our lavender. Our next flower for our cut flower garden that we're going to try is Aster and Tower Custom Mix. So these are one of the most recommended for a cut flower garden and I have personally never grown them, but we are excited to give those a try. Then we have a Pincushion Formula Mix or Scabosha. Scabiosa, I'm not sure. Um, again, these are one of the most highly recommended cut flowers, but we have not grown them yet. And then we have a Sweet Annie Artemisia. And I thought this would be really pretty in um, a winter type mix or just as a bit of greenery in different arrangements. The next thing we had, which was one of mom and I's favorite this year that we planted, is Gomfrina. So these are, um, they have a long stem with a little ball on top, and they are huge. We did not, we'd never grown them before this year, so we didn't expect them to get as big as they are. But they will get like a couple feet wide and really tall, like kind of a round, nice pretty round bush type shape. And we got every color they had in these. So we had, we got the formula mix and we got orange and we also have a hot pink and a red, I believe on the way that those were some of the ones that were back. Working. Next we have um, double click Cosmos. Uh, these are really easy to grow in a flower bed type situation and they are really pretty in flower bouquets. We got three different colors of ornamental kale. So these are really pretty. There's kind of a spring and fall flower, but they are so pretty grown next to mums and with your pumpkins and in flower pots like that. And they get really big. So these have, um, this is red. So it has a red center. We've got one with a white center and then one with a pink center. Next, we have zinnias, which again, these are super easy to grow. One of our favorites. They are always so big and bright. Like, you can see zinnias from so far away. Sorry about that. <laughs> the dogs are wrestling again. Um, but the first one we have is Jazzy Mix, and I really like this one. I like the bicolor petals. And mom and I always kind of go for like the bicolor, the interesting. A lot of people want their traditional reds, whites, pinks. Um, but we like the more unique the flower, the more we like it and the more we gravitate towards it. We also have Queen Lime Red, which we grew last year and it was a big hit and it was beautiful too. Um, it gets giant. I mean, these flowers get so tall and if you pinch them back, they'll get a little more bushy and a little less tall, but that's just personal preference again. Um, and then we also got Queen Lime Orange. And then we got Zowie Yellow Flame, which again, I love the bicolor look of this one and it almost looks neon. Next, we got Orange Button Calendula, which we've also ordered a, diff a few different colors of Calendula. We are going to try it out. We've never grown it before, but I wanna grow several different varieties and grow quite a bit of this because I would like to try, um, it's supposed to have healing properties. So I would like to try to make different salves and um, lotions and that sort of thing. So we're going to play around with that too. The last thing we have and my absolute favorite flower that we cannot go without is sunflowers. So we have um, several different varieties that we've 
saved seeds from over the years or we've been given seeds but I thought these were really fun. This one is a chocolate branching sunflower, which it is actually kind of a maroon chocolate color. And I thought that would be really pretty mixed in with the bright colors in a bouquet. We also have um, double quick orange, which is kind of a fluffy, I don't really know how to describe it, but it's not your round sunflower, the variety like teddy bear that looks like a marigold but it's a little more fringy and it um again i like the different texture i like the unique looks of flowers and that sort of thing so we're excited to try that one we have the teddy bear dwarf sunflower which is the one i was just mentioned that looked like a marigold then we have a firecracker dwarf sunflower so these dwarf sunflowers we will probably have available in the greenhouse this year just because they are a little shorter in size so we can sell them in pots a little easier. Um, this one has a red center. Then we have um, strawberry lemonade mix and this one is a branching sunflower. I personally prefer the branching because then you get more blooms for each stem. This one kind of has a variety. Some of them might be solid yellow and it's a real soft almost lemonade color. Um, yellow and then they have kind of a peachy maroon center on some and some that maroon is almost the whole flower and some you can barely see the maroon the last one we have is big smile dwarf sunflower this looks like your traditional sunflower it just won't get near as tall so if you don't have a space for those huge mammoth 12 foot tall sunflowers this would be a really good option so those are all the seeds I have to show you, but we have a lot of seeds left over from last year. So I am just going to touch on um, some of what we grew and what we liked, but also um, different methods to organize your seeds. So these are some of the methods we have used in the past to organize our seeds and try to keep it all together. We are so bad about some will be at mom's house, some will be at my house. They'll be in <laughs> three different rooms and then it comes time to either plant or to go buy seed and you have no idea what you have. You're thinking I could have swore I bought those and you can't find them so you just go buy more. And um, so that is kind of why we want this year to really focus on organizing our seeds, knowing exactly what we have so we can cut some of that cost down. The first thing we used was a just a regular photo box. The problem with this is that it's so wide that a single row, it's not wide enough quite for double row um, seed packets, but for a single row, there's so much room that they kind of fall all around and it's really hard to keep them packed in tight and organized. The next method we used that I really liked, especially for over the winter, because you can flip through, you can see the colors you have, you can kind of briefly see what you have, is actually a photo album. And this album, it's a Creative Memories album, and it's got these little plastic sleeves in it. And I did find out after I filled this up the first time that you cannot fill every one of these. So like the first page you would fill three and the next, the back side of that, you'd have to fill the other two. And that helps it keep pretty flat. And again, I really like that you could just flip through real fast. If you put them in alphabetical order, you could see exactly what you have. The problem with this was that when it came time to plant or to take seeds out, to organize, um, to see what we had to buy and to just go through them all again, it was really hard to carry a stack of these versus like a little tub. So and you don't want to take something like this out to the garden either so this year we are trying a method that i actually got from laura at garden answer and i will put the link to her channel below we got these little um dvd type cases from staples and we got six of these thinking that that would be plenty of room for the seeds we have plus the seeds we're buying this year well we have six and they are almost all full with the seeds from last year. So a lot of these seeds have actually been gifted to us, which is so much fun because then you can get unique varieties and you don't have to worry about the investment. You don't have to worry about what if I buy this seed and I have no idea how to plant it or what if it doesn't work out? What if I don't like it? So it's really fun to get these seeds um, gifted to us. 
and they're a lot of fun to try out but a lot of this we have also purchased over the years and some of it is harvested seeds um the way i have organized it this year and what i'll probably do i might change this in the winter but right now when i'm thinking about starting seeds and thinking about um the order i need to start those in the way I've done it, I have, which I'm also going to take my Cricut and make pretty labels for it after I figure out exactly how I want to organize these. But right now I have annals that will be started inside. And then within that, I have, um, these will be started in early January in a flat and then I will move them to four inch pots. And then I also have a section in early January that will be directly sewn into four packs. And then it goes like that and with um, both of those categories. Next, I'll have late January and then I'll have early March. And the way I decide on when to plant these, a lot of the seed packets will tell you um, a certain amount of weeks from your last frost date. So you'll just go from that frost date and count backwards. And for us, we actually plant a little earlier than the date you should be planting because that um that way we can get them in the greenhouse get them ready for you all to buy it in the spring um a little earlier than what you would want just to put out in your garden um and with the greenhouse we can keep them heated and in a sunshine area so it's a little easier for us um but this this system works really good the only thing i would almost go one size bigger than what we got because the baker's seeds are a little too tall so they kind of have to curl back in order to get the lid closed but it works good because some of these like that we've saved over the years um they go right in there you can get bulk seed in there so for right now this is a really good system for us and then what i would probably do so i have um then i have my direct sow annual so these i will eventually sort into when i need to plant them in the garden which most of these will be around the same time a lot of them will be after the first frost other than maybe sweet peas and um early frost hardy annuals such as those and then we have um our perennials in a box and again i have the ones i need to start inside are in the front and then the ones i direct sow are in the back then we have a box for vegetables and these uh, are organized the exact same seed starting in the order that I need to start them inside and then direct sow in the back and then the, I have two more this one is just kind of a hodgepodge I have we have a lot of ornamental corn seed that we've saved over the years um so these are they take up a lot of room so those are just kind of thrown into this one because we know we'll plant all those at the same time and then I also have several different um cut flower mixes wildflower mixes and these are really big seed packets that don't really go they will all be direct so so again we know they're in there and um, that helps keep track so that's kind of a hodgepodge and then the last one I have is my herbs and the herbs are I will be direct sowing or I will be starting almost all of these inside this year just to see and we have a lot of herbs that we have never grown before we're gonna play with like um somebody gave us some toothache plant seeds and I've never grown that but we're going to try and there's several different varieties in here that they're just gonna be a lot of fun Um, just give it a shot and if you don't know on something um give it a try just see how it goes if nothing else you're out of seed packet and if you have seeds left over you might find somebody else that would really enjoy that type of plant and you could give them those seeds so what i will probably end up doing um i need to incorporate all the new seeds into these and i also have a database in excel that keeps track of these i didn't do that last year but this year it is so helpful because then you can just real quick look at that like do I have enough of this as I'm planting the garden instead of having to go dig through all of these I can look and see if I have enough of each vegetable of the flowers we want to sell in the greenhouse of the flowers for a cut garden and all of those sorts of things but in the winter I really like putting the flowers in alphabetical order so that you can again just flip through real fast and see exactly what you have 
So after we get everything sewn this winter, I will probably go back through and reorganize these based on alphabetical order and not based on um, order of when you start to see. It's okay. So that is all we have for you today. If you have any questions on the organization, on suggestions for seeds to start, or anything along those lines, um, drop them in the comments or shoot us a message or an email. We would love to help you out as much as we can. We know that this can be a bit of a scary process and a, very much so an initial investment, but it is so worth it to see things that you have planted yourself come to life and go from a teeny tiny little seed to a beautiful flower. And we are so excited to get these in the ground. We will be showing you more um, of our purchases as they come in they are a little staggered and like I said these some of these were on back order so they might be a little bit but we are also going to do some videos on starting these seeds and take you through the step-by-step -step process on that so thank you for joining us today we will see you in the next video